our distal colostogram and planning for our PSARP. And here is a distal colostogram. And let's go to the question. What does everybody think? Ready to plan our surgery. And I hope we have some consensus here because I, you can show the answers. I can, so I can tell you, that's great. So you really cannot tell here. Um, I see many patients who have this type of distal colostogram and we end up repeating the study. Um, because I think what's important to recognize is you'll never find a rectum that at the bottom is flat. And why is it flat? Is because that's a line called the PC line, pubococcygeal line, where the sphincters compress the rectum inside the pelvis. And this uh, distal colostrogram has not been given enough pressure. So if you were to attack this rectum, you won't know exactly where the distal rectum is which we'll get to in a minute, why it's so important to know where the distal rectum is. So now, let's see what happens if our radiologist gives a little bit more pressure. So that's the same patient now. Let's go to the questions. Now what are we dealing with? Bladder neck fistula, prostatic fistula, or bulbar fistula? Caitlin, what do you think? It appears to show a bulbar fistula on the complete colostogram. Let's see, look at that. So we have a definition problem in our midst because it's very important to know that these are three different conditions, three different potentially different surgical approaches, three different levels of difficulty, and three different potentials for uh, prognosis discussion with the family. And here we have a, an experienced audience that can't decide which part of the urethra the fistula enters into. So, I, you can't see that? Oh, we can go back. Yeah, let's go back one. Okay, now forward one. Okay, is that better? All right, so stare at that for a second, but I'm going to give you a, um, and then we'll discuss it. I'm going to give you a, um, a way to figure this out. So when I was at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, most people are looking at the beautiful Monet's, and I was on a, a hunt for a really cool elbow. Okay, so this is what I saw. <laughs> and then I saw this. So I would suggest that we all agree on the different parts of the urethra and where the fistulas are by this representation of the urethra as an elbow. So essentially at the um, humerus, at the top of the humerus, I would consider that a bladder neck fistula. The central portion of the humerus would be prostatic and everything at the elbow or lower I would consider bulbar. And this turns out to be very reproducible so um, the pictures of the distal colostograms for each of these corresponding pictures are on the left. Did you want to, Richard, make a comment about this? I saw, I saw your eyes. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, Belinda? So since you're in New England, it's actually Cape Cod. Sorry? <laughs> it's actually Cape Cod because you're in New England. Because ah. when, when we first moved here, everybody's like this. When you go to Cape Cod, didn't know what that meant. But Cape Cod's an elbow. Oh. So, Secondly, <laughs> so we need the same picture. So you need done the same picture Thank with you. New okay, England because we'll that. that's what I have in my presentations. Secondly, um, one of the things that we're actually doing, which I think um, gives much better clarity sometimes on these pictures, and we presented at AAP last year, is our contrast enhanced ultrasounds. Because if you go down, radiology hates putting pressure. You either have to have specific radiologists you talk to. Mm -hmm who will do it, or I send myself or one of our team down to actually do the distal pressure colostogram. Um, we've been, uh, I've been lucky enough to work with some of the radiologists here who have been using contrast enhanced ultrasounds um, to actually detect reflux as well as urinary fistulas, which is much more sensitive and specific 
um, than the actual fluoro studies. So we use a um, con luminol luminol contrast, and it's real time, and you actually see the fistula fill. Mm -hmm. And if you, your radiologist is, is um, able to get the right views, you can actually see tip of coccyx, the fistula as the child's peeing, and you actually get these images because it's real time ultrasound now, and they don't have to give pressure, yeah. which often will help. It's a very nice suggestion. Okay, so um, there's no question associated with this particular one, but I just wanted to um, have a bit of an open discussion on different distal colostograms, different an anatomic malformations, and whether we should approach them via an abdominal approach, that would be usually mean laparoscopy for most folks in this room, or PSARP. And then how do you decide? So maybe from left to right, Caitlin, what would you do? Uh, I think the first one can be um, approach from a posterior sagittal approach, and the other two um, look like they're above the coccyx and will need laparoscopy. Richard? I agree. Don? And this, that's, that's what my plan would be. Yes, I agree. Does anyone in the audience want to disagree with that approach, with those approaches? I think one of the, anyone? One of the common, um, I think, misadventures is when the surgeon approaches the rectum from the wrong direction, and both are wrong. If you approach a bladder neck fistula from a posterior sagittal direction, you will be looking for a rectum that you'll never find, and you may very well be convinced that other things like the bladder neck or the urethra or the seminal vesicles or an ectopic ureter are in fact the rectum. And if you approach, and this is probably the more common scenario nowadays, is if you approach a very low rectum like you see on the left side with laparoscopy, you can do one of two things. You can either dissect very, very low and injure the urinary tract or be a little bit more timid and dissect and leave behind the distal rectum a so-called remnant of the original fistula. So I think it's very important to know. And, and the thing that I utilize to decide is the PC line again. So I draw a line from the pubic bone to the coccyx. And if the rectum is below that line, I'm confident I can reach it posterior sagittally. And if the rectum is above that line, posterior sagittally would be very difficult. And then I would use laparoscopy.